Hey guys, it's Richard from Grafting Dragon Fruits, and today I'm going to be showing you guys how I set up new pots and trellis with the cuttings that I've been leaving aside in separate pots to develop roots. So now they've been growing quite a bit, so they're ready to go into a bigger pot into a trellis, so that way they can continue to grow bigger. So I have a, my 20 gallon pot here. I'm going to be planting four cuttings. Here I have a unknown Edgar Valdivia seedling that he gave me and um, I don't know what fruit this is yet so this is going to be a mystery. Here is a Peruvian yellow. Um, I have Orejona and Sin Espinas. So these are the four cuttings that I'll be planting today and I have some Fox Farm Ocean Forest and if you guys know me by now I really like to use Fox Farm. Uh, the reason being is because it contains a lot of the microbes that it's gonna keep your cutting super healthy and happy for the next six months. You're not gonna need to add anything else in here. This is a soil that's kind of all in one. It has a lot of organic matter like uh, bat guano, fish poop, you know, all of that good stuff that's gonna keep feeding um, your cuttings as they grow. And after six months is when I like to add chicken manure, two inch of chicken manure onto the top and I'll mix it in within the soil. And that keeps a constant slow nutrient regimen so then it keeps feeding your dragon fruits. So that's what I'm gonna be using. This is all I use. There's perlite, there's everything you need in here already and it has really good well-drained uh, stuff in here so you don't have to worry about root rot. So Fox Farm Ocean Forest is my go-to and I use all this for my pots, okay? And all of my plants, this is all I use. All right, so I have my trellis. Here I'm using a concrete block and this is a vinyl fencing post that's just gonna help protect all the moisture that sits in the soil. And I wanted to prevent it from rotting. Um, I don't expect it to, to be you know, strong forever. Though everything doesn't last forever. So I wanna stretch it out as far as I can though. So that's why I have this on there. It's gonna protect the rain, the moisture and everything from rotting. And this is cedar wood. Cedar wood is really good to use because they're naturally resistant to rot, naturally resistant to moisture. So it lasts a lot longer than the ones you would buy at Home Depot, the Douglas fir. So if you have a lumber yard, use that type of wood, okay? It's really good for your longevity of your plants and for you, so you don't have to support things. So here we go. This is a 20 gallon pot and this is pretty heavy and you want it to be heavy so that way it can support your dragon fruits. I'm gonna go ahead and put it right in the center. Okay, so that looks centered to me. Now I'm gonna open a whole bag of Fox Farm. And if you guys check out the soil real quick so I can show you what I'm talking about. It's just really good stuff. It has perlite, it's really loose, not compact. A lot of organic matter in here. So really good soil. You don't need to add anything else for the next six months. So that's pretty good, right? And here we go. I'm just gonna fill this all up evenly. And it usually takes me about one and a quarter bag of this to fill up a whole pot. So I'm gonna go ahead and dump all this in. So this is a 1.5 cubic uh, feet bag. And this is how much soil you're gonna have in it after you pour it into a 20 gallon with your trellis. So as you can see, it's almost to the top and this is perfect. So this is where you're gonna start putting your cuttings in and then you're gonna fill it up with the rest of uh, the Fox Farm. I'm gonna go ahead and evenly layer all this out. Make sure my trellis is in the center. All right. So let's start with <laughs> the hard ones and then the easy ones that are gonna breeze through. This one, I need to be a little extra careful. I didn't put a stick that I usually would, like a bamboo stick to keep it from falling over. And normally I would tip a pot over like this to get the cuttings to come out. But this root in here is so bounded that I feel like I can just cut this open and then put it in here. So I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of see where I want to position this. So it'll probably be right here. The flat side is gonna be sitting against my trellis. So when I tie it, it's not gonna break anything. So right there looks good. So I do have a few tools that's gonna help me do this. Let me get closer. So this is a torque cutter. I'm gonna use this to cut the plastic pot out. And you don't have to do this if your cuttings is small and not so big like mine. Um, if they're smaller, you can go ahead and just turn it over. But what I do is I take a torque cutter, I cut it, and then this is just a box cutter. And I'm just gonna get really close to the pot and make sure I don't cut any roots. Just like that. 
you see how much roots there is in there? It's really, really healthy. Okay, so I'm gonna do another cut on the opposite side, just like that. Make sure you're holding onto your cutting so it doesn't fall out of your pot. Get really close, and then just cut right down. And you know, be careful, don't, don't cut yourself. Okay, so this is what I'm gonna do. I just kind of bend it like that, and you see how it just comes out? And my cutting comes out perfectly. And look at those roots. It is definitely ready to go into a bigger trellis, a bigger pot, I mean. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead, take this here. I'm gonna move, remove this bamboo stick after I get it all settled in. And just like that. There you go. This is look perfect, right? So you're gonna just put some soil to hold it up right. Okay. So I know that this one is okay. Now I'm gonna go ahead and start on another one. So this one is really big. I did a graft on this, so it's not gonna be as strong as a regular cutting would be. That is why I had to kind of cut that one because it was also a graft. And this one, the joint is really small, so I gotta be really careful with how I repot this. And the whole, you know, sad story that happens is people always repotting their cuttings and sometimes things break and they're just like, oh man, I wish I just hadn't even messed with it. But I'm showing you guys how to do it safe and sound here without losing anything. So I'm doing the same thing. I'm just cutting it open. These pots are only 50 cents. It's okay if you guys, you know, have to destroy a few. Okay, so here I go. I'm gonna just bend it over just like that. Grab it from the very bottom. And there you have it. The roots in here are definitely ready to be in. Sorry for the airplane noises. Okay. Make sure you support it. So then once you get over there, you can put some more soil in. Okay. So this is where I'm gonna tie things up because it gets really tricky once you move things around. I don't want anything to break. So go ahead and just support these two cuttings. So those two were grafts that I just transplanted, and then we're gonna do two cuttings. So then you know how to transplant grafts and cuttings now. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and fill the crevices with some more soil. I have my tabo here. This helps me get the job done a lot easier. And you're just gonna keep filling it up. Fill the soil as you go. So that looks good for now. I can now finish my other two cuttings. Okay, so here is a orejona, and this one looks pretty stable. I've been rooting this for about uh, two months now. So let's see uh, how the roots are. Uh, when I transfer these, I kind of just tilt it over and be careful. The spikes do hurt. And I try to be very careful and just squeeze things. Try to get that soil back in there. And as you can see, it just slides right out. And all that soil just goes there and nothing goes to waste. So it looks like Arahona roots are actually really growing really well. And it's, ooh, it's kind of dangling right there. So you don't want to expose the roots too long. I'm gonna go ahead and put this one in the back, okay? Here we go. And you get the back side there. I'm gonna get some soil from the side, support it up. Okay, and it looks like it's staying. We're gonna put one more cutting in and then tie it up. Okay, I'm gonna turn it around. All right, so there's a little hole there that I need to replace some soil in. And as you guys can see, Fox Farm is all I use. And my plants are doing very well. So this is Sinespinus. I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing. Take some of these dead leaves that's been falling in here. I'm gonna go ahead and turn it around. Make sure you're careful with the tip. Give it a light squeeze. Gently pull it out. 
Wow. Look at the roots on these ones. So, you know, I like to always stress the importance of developing really good roots before you transplant them into a bigger pot because they're just going to explode with growth because their roots are so bounded. Now, once they go into a bigger pot, they're going to just spread everywhere. Um, you guys, these cuttings are going to be fighting for root space because they're already developed and they're going to grow evenly in here. Okay, so that is the last one. Now I'm going to go ahead and tie it just to make sure everything stays sturdy. Those two up there. Get these ones here. Tie this one up really quick. Okay. All right. So now we're just going to fill up the rest of this and get it to uh, be covered all in soil. Okay. So here's a half bag that I have a box for. scoop just to cover the top of these guys and we are almost perfect okay so this looks really good I'm gonna go ahead and cut all the excess of garden tape that I won't need okay so this is where I feel safe enough to start taking out the bamboo sticks because now they're tied to the trellis so now I just take these out and we're gonna save these for new cuttings that we're gonna to use to plant. Here's another one. Yeah, so don't take out these uh, stakes of yours, your bamboo sticks or whatever you're using until you've secured everything in. And see, as you can see, I took it out and that one already fell. So I'm gonna go ahead and tie this one. Cut all the excess of uh, garden tape after I'm all done here. Okay. And then I always reuse them. I save them for you know smaller cuttings. So if you can recycle and reuse as much as you guys can, I'm trying to save the earth and our planet. Okay, so that's things out. Uh, there's one more right here. This one's in there pretty good. It's okay. Okay, so this one I'm uh have to cut the old garden tape that I had in here that's holding it up. It's doing a good job at holding it. And like that. Okay, so now my trellis is complete and that's all you have to do. I'm gonna grab the hose, do a light watering so you guys see how much water I put in there and then we're done, okay? Just give me one second. Okay, so here's the shower setting. It's gonna go off. Just wash off the cutting, all of the dirt that's what, that went on there. Just like that. Okay, so that's about a good 15 to 20 seconds of just watering on shower setting. Now I'm gonna move it to its permanent spot and that's it. All right, here we go. You guys see me pull this, it's so sturdy. It's not moving anywhere. They're doing a super great. They're gonna go right here to join the rest of the Dragon Alley. And there you have it. 
So that is how you set up a new pot, new trellis, and everything that you need to get it done, um, you know, and to do it safely, all right? So I hope this video was helpful for you guys, and if you guys enjoyed it, please hit the like button. If you guys have any questions about how I did all of this, go ahead and leave in the comment section, and I'll get back to you guys as soon as I can. And if you guys want to see more grafting and dragon fruit videos of mine, go ahead and hit the subscribe button, so that way you guys don't miss a single thing. Have a wonderful day now. Bye, guys.